The novel World War Z by Max Brooks details the events of the fictional zombie war. It is a unique take to the overcrowded zombie genre, telling of a worldwide war against the undead, and gave a new perspective to such an apocalypse, bringing voices of everyday people who experienced the conflict. Then the film came along and threw all that the window, with the explosions and running and Brad Pitt. <sighs> Point is, the book World War Z has fascinating lore and history detailing its zombie apocalypse, and in this video, we'll explore the world that Brooks created, since the movie certainly didn't want to do that. Here is the history of World War Z. In the unspecified near future, a child in rural China, only known as Patient X, gets sick from a mysterious new virus, frightening the village. He attacks and kills a few fellow villagers, leaving the town in a panic. After a short amount of time, more sporadic outbreaks occur throughout China, but news of the disease is quickly suppressed by the government. The virus makes its way into South Africa through the black market organ trade, and rapidly begins to ravage the population. This is where the news of the disease comes to the public, but is only considered a form of rabies, and ignored by the Americans, not wanting to cause a panic during election time, and the rest of the world. The infected are traditional zombies, slow-moving, mindless, but with the ability to travel in large hordes. They only die after being shot in the brain. Combined, their main threat is their breakdown of social order. Also biting people. That's not very healthy. Eventually, the world becomes concerned, and so Breckenridge Scott sells a brand new vaccine to cure the disease. However, it was only for rabies and not the actual zombie virus. Yet it did help keep the population calm and believing they were safe. To combat the growing threat, the US launches special force operations to quell small infestations at home and abroad. An ignorant public still disbelieving the dead could come back to life, have faith in their placebo vaccine, and do little to prepare for what is to come. In the spring, news breaks of the uselessness of the vaccine, and that the plague was not rabies, but causing the dead to come back to life, and so a panic begins across the world. This is called the Great Panic, a time when the world realizes the threat the zombies play, and chaos soon breaks down social order. Israel seals its borders to the outside, and enacts a successful quarantine. Refugees flee across borders around the world, attempting to run from the hordes, causing mass international incidences between nations. Iran and Pakistan wipe each other out by nuclear war, over Pakistani refugees flooding into Iran. In a few months, New York City was lost, with millions of its population reduced to zombies. And an ability to combat the threat and boost morale, the military planned a successful winning operation at Yonkers. The Battle of Yonkers, however, was a massive failure. Poor planning, a lack of training against the undead, resulted in the army being overrun by millions of zombies. In defeat, the United States retreated to the west, leaving anyone east of the Rockies to defend themselves. South Africa creates a solution called the Redeker Plan, from ex-apartheid official Paul Redeker, who suggests on establishing safe zones of uninfected survivors. Refugees, who are told they are in safe zones, are used as bait to distract the zombies, and sacrificed to save the survivors. Other countries adapt this sort of plan. Many across the world unwillingly lost their lives so that others could live. In an international meeting of nations in Honolulu, the United States capital, the American president suggests on going on the offensive, a war against the zombies, instead of trying to survive in isolated pockets. A cough cough, world war against zombies. The strategy was to liberate areas of zombie infestation, using slow and deliberate headshots. In battles, soldiers would lure packs into specified kill zones. When soldiers themselves are surrounded by zombies from other directions, the soldiers would form a perimeter to protect the center. If they didn't run out of ammo, the battle tactic was the most successful, first being used at the Battle of Hope. Across the globe, nations use these tactics to take back their lands. After three years, the United States took back New York, 
After a decade of war, North America is clear of zombies. Two years later, World War Z came to an end after victory in China. Ten years after the war, the world looks much different due to the events of the zombie apocalypse. A religious movement swept Russia, turning it into an orthodox theocracy. China lost much of its population and became a democracy, while Tibet maintains the world's most populated city. Cuba became a capitalist paradise, an economic center of the world. North Korea's population entirely disappeared. Nobody knows where they went. Iceland is entirely full of zombies. Many nations no longer even exist. There are still major pockets of zombies, mostly at the ocean floor or in the north, such as Siberia or Finland. The ecosystem of Earth is badly damaged due to the fire spread during the war. It's rapidly cooled the planet and the atmosphere is highly polluted. Resources are now scarce and major economic pre-war assets are completely useless. But the world, while hurt, is rebuilding. Humanity is coming back from its brink of destruction. It faced the apocalypse and fought it back. With that, mankind became stronger. World War Z is a collection of stories that symbolize the ability to come back from the darkness. And that's why the lore is so fascinating. It may not be alternate history, but it's still a scenario that makes us think. Like us on Facebook, subscribe if you have not done so. This is Cody from the Alternate History Hub.